Okay. Okay, we've uh, uploaded some data from our data collector uh, into our quad. And uh, some of the things that you might want to do prior to uh, plotting these points, you can see that I have all these, uh, these numbers. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to delete these numbers. And this is the way you would want to plot it to begin with. And it will save you uh, a lot of time and energy. So I get some of the Take it out. We'll so if you plot them by number, you're going to have uh, uh, to go in and edit the thing. So prior to that, before you plot point, we're going to go to properties menu. Now let's say I want to plot only the trees. And if we use point management, uh, it would be a lot easier to do all this. So currently the endpoint symbol is a dot, so I can change that to a whole variety of different things, anywhere from a brick wall, uh, concrete monuments, dots, which is what the default is, power poles, uh, so now we're going to a large tree. Okay. Uh, point number. For trees, actually we don't want any point number, so we're going to make that a none. And if we do any drawing of lines, we don't need a bearing and distance for like a tree line or a fence row. So we're going to turn that off as well. So no point number. Uh, we're going to plot large trees and no bearing and distance. Now the color of the lines uh, when they're inverse will still be red. You have the option of changing that. So if you use a color printer, the color may have some uh, uh, things that you may want to consider. Also the line uh, Currently, is by default uh, continuous, but as you can see, it can be uh, dots, uh, dashes, uh, borders, uh, wood fence, railroads, power lines, fence lines, water lines, all kinds of things in here. So, uh, but we will leave it at uh, continuous for now, the default. And uh, another one here, I want to get rid of. So, uh, so now we want to plot. Trees. We're set up for trees. So we go to points menu, plot point, and I simply go down and I want to pick up the ones I want. Or if I had all trees like in a specific series of point management, I can type that string in here, like an example of, uh, oh, maybe 400 to 425. So it would be 400-425. Or I can scroll down through here and look for something that says a tree. And then I also have tree lines. That's a different function. So I'm going to highlight these for trees. And then I say accept, and voila, my trees are there. So now I have a tree. Uh, so I'm going to say done with that. Now then, uh, some other items. You're going to be probably doing some grid leveling, uh, either by total station or by uh, another uh, method, maybe a laser. Uh, or what have you, and so we need to know uh, and be able to distinguish the grid points differently. So again, we're going to go back to properties, and we'll go to the endpoint symbol. Now, typically, we use a cross for a spot elevation, and under this point, we want to pick elevation. We don't want a point number, I want the elevation. Uh, but the problem is, I think my database doesn't have elevations. I forgot to put those in. So uh, uh, at any rate, I could then go back to plot point. And unfortunately, all my elevations are zero. But here I have a line of grid points. And here should have elevations. Uh, so. I think what I will do is quickly put some of those in there. Now you should get appropriate elevations by using a total station. So let's go 685.5 and then I'm going to go uh, 6.
Okay, so we're going to accept that. Now, I want to plot all of them in our grid elevations utilizing a elevation and a cross. No point number. So again, go back to plot point. And I'll scroll down, or if I knew what the point management numbers were, I could simply put in a point string, which I'll do this time. So 200 to 212, you will probably have more than that. So I can go 200 dash 212 and say accept that. And I now have uh, elevations with little crosses. Now later I'll probably have to come back in to remove some of these because I don't need that many spot elevations. Um, so I'll probably uh, remove most of these at a different time. Then we'll come back to these spot elevations in a little bit. Uh, the next thing we want to check, uh, let me see, I believe I have a tree line. So again, I want to go back to a point number so that I can remember since I'm old. I'm going to go back to a dot and then I want a continuous line to be changed to tree line and so I've got a tree line over here so I'm going to go back to point plot and scroll down and find tree line 133 134 and accept that so I'm saying done and right there's 133 134 so now if I inverse It puts a red line with little trees. Now, if I've got brush, uh, if this were a brush area and somewhat irregular in shape, uh, I could take a shot occasionally to get a basic pattern that might be like a bunch of short cord lengths. And then when I inverse from point to point, it, it will draw this line with small trees, and you can call that a brush area. So now we want to do a fence line. So I'm going to go back up here and find uh, something different. Fence line. And so point plot. And I'm going to scroll down and find my fence line. Accept. So, 136.37, I believe. Another thing you can do if you do not know what a point number is, uh, or you've plotted them and you go away and come back, go to the restroom, you come back, you go, gosh, I don't remember what, what's 137 or 136. If you type in GP for get point, your cursor will turn to a box with a little dot. I click on that and it says, ah, fence. That's a good thing.